New in 2015 is the ability to create structural steel members using structured parts. To begin, make sure that your status bar is set to structured parts and then simply create a geometry element. In our case, we'll start with a block this by drag and drop from our catalog or you can use extrude, spin, sweep, and loft to create a shape as well. When you start your element, go ahead and set it as active for structured parts so that we can create the elements that are necessary for structural steel members to be created. Let's go ahead and size this, make it a little bit bigger. And to use structural steel, you have to have a 3D curve or a 2D profile. So let's go ahead and create a 3D curve based off of our geometry. To do that, we'll just select our faces that outline our profile and just go ahead and say create and extract 3D curve. And you'll see our 3D curve wireframe is automatically created for us. If you expand your part, you can actually hide that solid body so that we see our wireframe of our 3D curve. You can also hide planes that are no, no longer necessary at the moment, so we'll go ahead and hide those. So now we get a good idea of what our frame looks like. The nice thing about structure parts is everything is associative to the element that they're created from. So in our case, if we adjust our block, you'll see that our wireframe will automatically adjust in size when we pull our handles. Now that our part is created and we have wireframe or 2D profile and our part is still set as active, we can visit the weldment tab, ribbon bar, and access the insert frame command. Once you select this, you'll have various types, whether they're ISO, GB, or ANSI standard types. You can have families, uh, family types, which are equal leg profiles, pipe profiles, channel sections, square tubing, and then you have access to various sizes for each one of these elements. One thing to note is these size elements are stored in a table file in your application folder underneath the program files where IronCAD is installed. And you can add or remove various sizes to that list that fit your needs. So let's go ahead and start with a very, uh, simple size here, a 30 by 30 for our case. And now it's asking you to select the paths that are used to create the element. Once we select those, you'll see the highlight and preview of the profiles being created. And you can simply hit OK to finish this command at this time if you want. You can also do some advanced things. Notice that your very first element that you created, you'll see some curves that are defined on the actual sketch. You'll see the X and Y axis along with these cross sections, in this case for our square tube. Uh, other ones may not have that, but some of them have these elements that allow you to define or change the position of the profile. For example, maybe we want it in this top left corner. We can select the point and it'll move that profile to that top left corner of our curve. In this case, notice that the other curves may not align in the appropriate location. This is because we're dealing with 3D curves and there's no real up direction that's defined on these profiles. That's what these options for section orientation are used for. In our case, we'll go ahead and select the plane to define the direction and then we'll select our corner point and you'll notice everything moves correctly into the right orientation. You can also use the angle to rotate these about the curve if you wanted to rotate like a 45 degrees, for example, you can just simply type that in and get that size. Once that profile is created, we can hit OK, and you can see that member is automatically created for us. At any point in time, you can right-click underneath your part. Once these are created, you'll see the still member. You can right-click on those, edit feature options to change this as well. If, for example, maybe you wanted to make that a smaller size, we can see that profile change. If we hit undo, we can go back to that. And it maintained our orientation for us as we did that size. Size change. <clears throat> In addition to editing the feature itself, you'll notice underneath the steel structure uh, member in your tree, you'll see the frame elements that are contained in that. And these are all the same size uh, frame members, but their lengths are varying. If you select on these and right click and go to properties, you'll see various information about the name and actually the, the frame length for each one of these elements. It's also stored in the custom for the frame length. The nice thing about this, this information is what it will automatically be pulled into the bill of material in the cost of draft environment when you create a drawing. And we'll show that a little bit later. Now that we have our elements created, we can do other things. For example, we can trim and extend. And there's various types of trim. You can do an end miter, trim face to face. Uh, let's just start with an end miter. And you simply select the bodies. You get the preview of your miter condition and you hit OK to accept that. And you can continue to repeat the command and walk around to get this creation. 
To speed up your process, you can use other tools such as the middle mouse button to finish the command and Alt R, or sorry, Alt Enter to repeat a command. So that can actually speed up your process to create this. So we basically created our profile and our trim conditions. And you'll notice if we go back to our block element, if we change the size, you'll notice that everything will update automatically for us. This is the benefit of a structure part that it maintains all the associations to each element in the process. So all of our trim conditions and our miters are all maintained. Let's go ahead and create another section on the side. In this case, let's just go ahead and make a little bit uh, of a different size, a 20 by 20 in this case, and we'll create this on the, the vertical members. Now the issue with the vertical members is if you want to move these around on the, as we did for the top members, you may not be able to get the orientations on all sides of the verticals to align correctly. For example, if we select our corner point is where we want to align it to the inside, you notice that this one actually moved in, but these other ones on the outside. If we define our profile direction, Notice this still will not correct our case. It just changes some of the profiles around. In this case, let's go ahead and move it in again. You'll see they're all still on the outside. However, you can select on some of these curves and use this flip path direction to change its orientation. That'll work great for these first two elements, but the other two elements may not flip in the right direction based on their starting location. So in this case, we would actually have to just delete these two elements and begin with our first two and then recreate the other two on the opposite side. So if we just create our other two on the opposite side using the same sort of operations, we can go ahead and create those, those profiles. We can move our, select our section direction again. In this case, move our element in. In this case, we can just flip over our inside profile for the opposite side and create that. So now that we've got our four vertical members created, we can also do the trim command on this. In this case, we'll show a different type of trim. And this one is actually the trim to face, where we select our frame, the face that we want to trim by, and the body to keep. And we can go ahead and create that, and we can walk around and do this for each one of these to create our element to be fully trimmed for our condition. There we go. So now we're all fully trimmed. We've got our sort of a table leg here in our case. And again, it's all still fully associative to our block. If we want to adjust this, we can change that. We can also right click on the members if we wanted to change the steel. So this is actually the basic process that we use to uh, create our steel members. But the nice thing that we have shipping with 2015 is another catalog called Steel Frames, which will allow you to drop out basically starting profile elements. For example, let's just go ahead and just delete our part. We can drop out a basic box frame, for example, and you can see that's a wireframe that's already created for us and associative to a block, or we can even drop out a circular profile that's based on a cylinder that we can adjust and drop a uh, element on. Or on the right-hand side of the catalog are shapes that are already defined. For example, if we dropped a reinforced frame, you'll see that it's already built for us based with a wireframe, and this one's got some side members on it of uh, various sizes and already trimmed for us, and we can essentially just walk in select our feature and adjust it to get a basic size that we need for our element or for whatever application that we're using. And this can be used for any one of these. For example, we have a cross member frame that gives a little bit more capabilities. If you go into its, its base profile, you'll see that when we adjust this, the three members in the inside will equally space for our members. And again, we can just change these members to different sizes for our application. And again, the circular and elliptical profiles are based, instead of a block, they have cylinders or ellipse profiles that you can adjust to get your profiles automatically built. So a very handy uh, option to uh, speed your process of the design. Instead of always starting from scratch, you can use some of these elements that are already created. Just simply drag and drop them out, size them to fit, or alter them to add more curves or different size elements to meet your needs. Once your profile is created, or your still members all created, you simply save these files. And we'll go ahead and save this off as a reinforced steel on our, on our desktop. And when we go into our drawing, which is a CASA draft drawing environment, we can actually access the information on a bill of material. So let's go ahead and create a standard view. And let's just go ahead and create an isometric view. And let's go ahead and show all the curves in that isometric view for us. And now, when we go ahead and create our bill of material, we can select our profile, and everything that's named 
part name will actually pull the information from each one of these members. So the nice thing about that is instead of taking each one of your, your bodies that's in the, the scene parts and save them out as individual files, you can just create one single part with your structural elements using the part name. It'll actually extract that and place everything that you need in the bill of material. So in our case, when we zoom in here, we'll see we have uh, four uh, members of these various size types that actually show the type size and the actual length or the cut length and we also have one of a different or two of them at the different size so you can see in our profile in this case we have our two members that are smaller size uh, profiles and then we have four of these four of those and four of our vertical members that's all representative representative in our bill of material and of course we can add extra bill of material information here and our item bubbling will all associate with that information. So a very nice way to create structural still members using the new structured part uh, capabilities with insert frames and then calling that out in the bill of material.